What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. I'm Isaiah, and I recently talked one of my friends into playing Yoff Siga with me. If you're not familiar with Yoff Siga, you might want to go check out the Let Me Talk At You video that I did for it, but quick, rough, skeletal overview. It is a miniature agnostic game from Black Sight Studios set in a mostly low fantasy setting where a giant plant growth thing called the bloom is slowly taking over the world you are in charge of a war band of explorers who are going into the bloom in search of treasure or loot or lost knowledge or whatever it is that floats their boat so in order to play this awesome game we got to make a war band to do that we need a few things we need the rule book we need some models we'll take a better look at these otherwise uh, in a minute i know that i'm handling them in a not so ginger way if you are looking to just play a one-off game of yafsiga with your friend um or maybe you're trying to get into the game you're not really sure this is the only sheet that you will need this is the basic roster sheet now if you are looking to play the game as a campaign which i am doing you will need one of these which is your campaign tracker sheet. And there are, this is not a stack of the same things, there are different ones. So you can be an expeditionary, ex expeditionary company, a raiding party, a marshal's phalanx, or a spellcaster's retinue. I'm gonna be going with the spellcaster's retinue. We'll talk a bit more about what this one's for and how to use it in a, in a few minutes. But we're gonna start off with just the book and this sheet right here so if you're playing a one-off and you're using this sheet you and your opponent will need to discuss the amount of renown that you are each going to start with renown is the list building currency of the game which in a, a one-off game you would each say so we're going to play you know 40 renown or 50 renown or 10 renown or whatever and then that's how much you have to spend to equip your warband the ace k q and j correspond to the face cards in a deck of regular playing cards. The game does not use dice. It uses a mechanic where you draw cards from a deck. The face cards, however, make up your hand and you use them to activate models. So the ace, you playing the ace from your hand represents activating this model, the king that model, the queen that model, the jack that model. So your first step is to choose your models and to assign them to these various roles, to these various cards. Models can come in, or units can come in one of two ways. They can be solo models. Your ace or your leader must be a solo model. They also come in squads, which are groups of three bonded members. And other than your ace being a solo, there is no limitation on, you could have a, a solo and two squads, you could have three squads, you could have three solos, you have two solos and a squad. That composition and how you do that is entirely up to you, but try to make sure that their loadouts match or look similar so that there's not great confusion later on in the game. So let's take a closer look at the models that I'm gonna be using. These are the Taiga Clan models from Black Sight Studios' Yoff Seagull line. Sorry if you just heard my dog jump down from his perch in the window. Uh, they sent me these models a while back. I got them painted up finally and I'm looking forward to putting them on the table. So this is gonna be my ace. One of my solos, this one will be my king. These painted up really, really easily. And I like that the weapons are a little bit flimsy, but overall, I'm pretty happy with them. My queen. And in this group of three will be a squad. So we got one guy with sword and board, and then two guys in various poses of various states of swinging their sword. Really dynamic models. Really, really solid, good twisting kind of poses. Oops. We then move to the assigning of stats to these blocks. We're looking at physical, skill, and willpower. Physical or physique is used predominantly for your melee stuff. A lot of your range stuff will be skilled, and then your magic will be willpower. They are used for other things, but that's kind of a, a rough breakdown of it. Everybody starts with a movement of four. 
when it comes to the skills so when you are drawing from the deck you are looking for your skill value or less so the higher the number the better chance you have of getting a successful hit or spell or whatever it is that you are trying to do your stats that you have to assign are seven six and five and they can be sorted distributed any way that you want among those stats so i'm going to do that real quick and i'll show you what i did and then talk for a second about why i did it that way so there isn't a lot of intrigue here but you do want to stat according to what you want the model to be able to do well so like with my ace who's going to be a spellcaster i've got him with a will of seven for everybody else who are all predominantly melee characters they're going to have a physical of one now, I may give them, you know, these guys like a pocket crossbow or something like that, but probably not. I'm probably going to be a very, very punchy army or team warband with the exception of my spellcaster. We'll kind of bubble around that and try to push through the field and see how it goes. But stats are assigned. Next up are health points, which are pretty, pretty easy to you just kind of check which whether it's a squad or a solo and then it tells you so all of this is self explanatory with the exception of squad is a little bit of clarification there. Each model squad is made up of three models. Each model in that squad has two hit points and then your solos have four. And then the next step is to figure out the size the volume of your models and it gives you some guidelines. So a small model is going to be 25 to 32 millimeters 25 millimeters tall. A medium model is going to be 25 to 32 base and up to 40 millimeters tall. A large unit will be 40 millimeter base and at least 50 millimeters tall or up to 50 millimeters tall. And then a huge unit would be a 50 millimeter base and 60 millimeters tall. All of these are regular dudes and they come with inherent bonuses. Some of them have drawbacks, other things of that nature. All of these are medium models. So we're going to mark as volume under volume. We're gonna mark that medium for everybody. As a medium model, everybody gets plus one to their save bonus. If you're small, you gain one to your movement, but would suffer minus one physique and it would cost you two renown for that model. For a large one, they gain one physique and two save bonus, but they suffer minus one to their move. And that costs three renown. And for a huge model, you're paying five renown, but you're getting plus three to a save bonus, plus one wounds, and you suffer minus one to your move stat. So bonuses and drawbacks, which is good because it creates balance. So everybody here will have an additional plus one. I'm just going to mark it as plus one right there to their save bonus. Next, we come to fleshing out those models a little bit more. So each model belongs to an archetype of your choosing. The archetypes for the Ace are the Ascetic, the Baron, the Knoll, the Thane, the Tyrant, and the Wizard. Some of them give you a passive ability. Most of them give you a passive ability. Some will give you a simple action, like a special thing that you're able to perform. I am a wizard. So I'm gonna have the passive ability Studious, which is Arcane 2, and I have advantage while casting spells. In the solo models, we have Apprentice, Bard, Berserker, Champion, Cleric, Dervish, Executioner, Enforcer, Guardian, Hearthguard, Huntmaster, Knight, Rogue, and Sergeant. So for my two solos, I went with a Guardian for Jagoran for the name. And I, I got names for them, so they're Jagatai, Jagoran, Goju, and the Jubals. They all like to be called Jubal. Uh, so, Jagoran's a guardian, which means that he reduces all non-crit damage by one to a minimum of one. And J Goju is a dervish. So he has whirling death. If a model takes damage from him, they have to take a will test. If they fail, they are poisoned. And then for the Jubals, I'm going to use Acolytes because I think that it is more fitting and fluffy. However, I think Levies is probably the best of any of them because it allows you to bring a model back if you're at one model remaining. And that's, that's pretty good. But it is a Wizard's Retinue and Acolytes make sense. And their ability is really cool. It lets you kind of like Sensei divining, Sensei's Divining Top, the top of the Chaos deck, which is where you're drawing your hits and misses and stuff, saves, all that stuff from. So you get some manipulation of that, which is, which is also really cool. So at this point, we start to jump around a little bit. Now, if you are 
playing a one-off game, we then come to gear and spells, where you're going to buy your gear, buy your abilities, your skills, your spells, all that stuff. That's where you spend it. Now, if you're playing campaign, we flip back a little bit. And the first thing we need to do is look at our origin for our band. My origin is Taiga Clans. So I would get, I get plus one burst when casting spells. We then, we then want to take a look at our sheet, our campaign sheet, because it will tell us our starting equipment. So I start with a Mago staff, a pole arm, a two-handed weapon, and a, and a single one-handed weapon. Now I am not exactly sure how that works with a squad. I'm not exactly sure if like, because if I give them the one-handed weapon, does that become like they all have the same sword? That part I'm not exactly sure about. That's what I'm going to do because it what it's what makes sense to me. But I because it doesn't make sense that you would have models that start with absolutely no weapon in their hand. So that's what I'm going to be doing. We want to come back to the gear section, and it's going to give you all the stats that you need to fill in the line, the weapon line here on your character sheet. Some of the weapons also have keywords associated with them, and it is wise to flip over to page 87 and familiarize yourself with the ones that your warband has. There's not, it's not a long list, it's just a single page. So definitely keep that up because it's things that can affect gameplay, good or bad, just th things that we as gamers have to remember. So that's on page 87. All right, so we got all our weapon profiles filled in. I've got my spell, which was lightning on my wizard. He's also carrying the poultice, which is basically a heal, a heal potion. It's a heal pot consumable use item. And I have one person with the specialist skill. I gave that to Jagorin, and that gives him plus one physique, skill, and will when he is performing the interact simple action. Also, correction, I was wrong about that origin keyword. It gives the bonus to one model. So just my wizard would have plus one burst when casting spells. So on the other parts of this sheet, we have other things that we can look at. We've got a section for keeping up with injuries that we can occur. We've got the chart for seeing how bad an injury is. And then we've got spoils of battle. The Spoils of Battle is just a draw off the Chaos deck, as is this one. The 13 and 12, 10, 11, 12, 13 are because the winner of the bout gets to add plus 3 to that roll. So that's how you can have 13 when the deck only goes to 10. And then we've got our stash for keeping up with any equipment that we gather that is not on one of our models. And that, my friends, will do it. We have successfully created a Warband for some campaign narrative play of Yas Siga from Black Sight Studios. Thanks so much for tuning in, hanging out while we went through this process. I hope it was helpful or at least mildly entertaining, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your day. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel, go over there, check out the link in the description, check out the Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff over there, including access to our Discord server, talk to me, hang out with me, talk about our work, what we got going on in the hobby. Um, some shout outs, all kinds of cool stuff. Check it out if that's something that you think you would be into. And regardless of whether or not you do that, I want you to know that I am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.